similar to what we talked about yesterday, but today we have different voices to it because we are joined by the clergy. I have Bishop Malachi Ezekiel and uh, Reverend Anthony Amos at my far left. <laughs> yes, and on my right, it's Bishop Malachi Ezekiel. And uh, they both work at East Africa Pentecostal churches and with the bishop being the national treasurer of it. Karimwini Sana, lovely to have you. Thank you. With us. You want to introduce yourself just a little bit in yeah. case there's something I've missed. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, mm -hmm. Stephanie. Uh, uh, I'm Bishop Malachi yeah. Ezekiel. I serve the East Africa Pentecostal churches, mm -hmm. as you have heard, and I am the national treasurer. Our organization is uh, within the country, and also we have opened uh, more branches in Tanzania and also Uganda, mm -hmm. by God's grace. Wow. So mm -hmm. our end of this is at Meru, but mm -hmm. recently we are going to bring it to Nairobi because we have brought uh, a lad within Nairobi, yeah. and we thank God for that. Our organization was begun by a missionary in the year 1953. Mm -hmm. So it's an old thing, but we thank God for the grace that we have. Wow. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you very much. And for mm -hmm. you, Reverend Anthony. Thank you so much. Good morning, all of you. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, Reverend Anthony Emos, mm -hmm. working with Bishop Malachi. Okay. Yeah. All right. So welcome, gentlemen. We want to talk about... Uh, sustaining a successful business and there's so many angles that we can take a look at maybe we can start with the church do you think um bishop let's mm -hmm. let me start with you that mm -hmm. the church should be in a position to run a business and enterprise yes i think uh the church running a mm -hmm. business is not a problem mm -hmm. if at all it is going to be done in the light way because Money and the church, mm -hmm. you cannot separate. Because when you have a business, mainly, maybe uh, some of the members are going to be employed in that particular place. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the income that is going to come is going to support the, the church, even in the progress of the evangelism mm -hmm. and ministering far and wide. So it's very, very important when a church has a business okay yes don't you think uh, at some point maybe it might lose focus and uh, you know we we mostly know that uh, the clergy are there to preach the gospel and uh, and all that so will it at some point lose focus on that to the business i don't think so because uh, uh we need to minister to uh the members or rest mm -hmm. Jesus Christ's ministry was also uh, meant to minister to the, uh, the, the, the members of Restigary, mm -hmm. whereby he had to do uh, the ministry or preaching the word and also feeding the people. Mm -hmm. So if in the church we have poor people, we have people who are in need, sometimes we'll be able now, if we have a business, we can support the poor the, the needy, the orphans, the widow. I mean, that will be uh, done by the support from the business. Mm -hmm. And as I have said, yeah. if you were to do it, we do it in the right way. Right. Not diverting the focus of the word. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. And for you, Reverend, what, what are your thoughts on that? Are there any, um, you know, red lights to it or is it or just fine for for a church to run an enterprise actually it should be like that that's how it should be <laughs> <laughs> and because uh, as bishop was saying that we need money to support this work mm -hmm. of angospo and um we just need to understand the grace mm -hmm. that people are operating upon mm -hmm. and um, we have department in churches so there is no way if a church is organized that uh, a clergy will be diverted and uh, lose focus mm -hmm. from preaching and doing the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all a matter of uh, having department okay. and uh, competent people mm -hmm. who do that kind of work. Okay. Yeah. So that would be a good thing mm -hmm. uh, in the long run. Oh, of course. All right. And the, this perception that people have, uh, some people have, that people run the church as a 
the, the business aside, the entrepreneurial venture aside, you know, having something that will generate income. Mm -hmm. But people have the perception that uh, some men of God uh, are running the church itself as a business. What do you think of this, Bishop? Uh, that is wrong. If you make it to be a business, mm -hmm. you are now doing it against the, the word of God because you are there as a shepherd. A shepherd will lead the sheep to where there is uh, green purchase. Mm -hmm. But if now you divert that, that thing, then the, the, the most important uh, thing, which is winning the soul, yeah. and you make it to be a business, that is wrong, that is wrong. That is very, very wrong. wrong. We lose focus on what Absolutely. the church is ma mandated y to yes. do. Yeah? And that is why the book of Acts, mm -hmm. when there was some problem in the church, the disciples decided to say, let's assign some people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the work of the temples, mm -hmm. that we're going to go out and do the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. So because as the, the clergy, mm -hmm. we are going to win souls. <laughs> But as he has said, if we have people who are doing good the business, we can assign them and they, that will be the right thing. Okay. So that now the, the, the preachers or the clergy can continue preaching the gospel. But they are overseeing the work mm -hmm. of the business also. Overseeing the work of the business. Yes, yes. And the business me, meaning that it's actu an actual business, an actual enterprise aside mm. from the church, you know, mm. not getting money from the congregants themselves, but having something <laughs> running mm -hmm. then, and by people. And Reverend, you're smiling. So there's <laughs> a question that I want to ask something that, uh, you know, in recent past or even now, people are still discussing mm -hmm. about the church being regulated. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on that? I'm for it. Mm -hmm. I'm for it. Uh, what are your reasons? The church should be regulated. Mm -hmm. But now this, we are seeing that uh, the government cannot uh, regulate church directly. Mm -hmm. You know, we have umbrellas. We yeah. have umbrellas like NCCK, National Congress, EK. Mm -hmm. And uh, if churches can be regulated through those umbrellas, Mm -hmm. then uh, we can do away with this uh, uh, man of God. Okay. Uh, yeah. So how, how, how do, would you uh, regulate via the umbrella? For someone who doesn't maybe understand how that can happen, if we have an umbrella for re regulating the church, how would that work? You know, there are rules and regulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, for instance, uh, in Kenya, a church must be registered with attorney general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, ministers of the gospel must be accepted by the government, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, we are also saying it is good, even men of God, to show the certificate. Mm. Uh, and if uh, possible, from accredited universities or colleges, mm -hmm. uh, so that we may kick out all these people. You know, preaching and then doing the work of the ministry is by calling. It's a calling, mm -hmm. actually. It's a gift. But also, uh, we need educated people to do this work. Because okay. there is no harm mm -hmm. by going further and do study. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So when we are talking about regulation, mm -hmm. we should understand that there are rules and regulation that are guiding these umbrellas. Mm. And uh, these are spiritual matters. When we are talking about spiritual matters, uh, government cannot understand, cannot discern. Mm -hmm. Actually, the Bible says that the spiritual matters are discerned by them that are in spirit. <laughs> yeah. so, so we cannot go kicking uh, <laughs> men, uh, looking Saying for men, you, God, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. No. And that's why we are involving now umbrellas. Mm -hmm. Because these umbrellas, they are governed by men of God. Mm -hmm. So men who understand the matters of the spirit. Okay. And they will understand that, is this one, uh, does this one qualify? Mm -hmm. You know? Is this church preaching the uh, sound doctrine? Mm. You see? But now, when we come and uh, I was telling some other people somewhere that uh, you saw when uh, this man by Yeshua Tongolen is Jewish somewhere there, mm -hmm. when he was taken <laughs> to the court, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, his lawyer said, uh, Now, if he's not Jesus, mm -hmm. then show us the true Jesus. And the court <laughs> could not produce the true Jesus. <laughs> so it ended there. So there's no case against him. Uh, there is no case against him <laughs> because these are matters of spirit. So the umbrella mm -hmm. would yeah. have discerned whatever mm -hmm. this man is doing is wrong. Mm. So, and the umbrella now will offer this man to the government as a criminal. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now the government cannot attack church directly. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, they cannot win the battle. They can't win it. They any. cannot. All right. They cannot. <laughs> okay, back to you, Bishop, <laughs> on what the Reverend is saying, mm -hmm. uh, that at least men of God need some sort of accredi accreditation mm -hmm. from uh, a school. and But we have people saying, you know, and even in the Bible it's written that uh, God uses anyone, mm -hmm. you know. So it God decides to use someone yeah. who has no education but mm -hmm. understands the things of the Spirit, knows the Bible, mm -hmm. and has this calling to preach. Mm -hmm. So would that lock that person out simply because they can't afford to go to school but they want to minister? I think... Uh it's good to have the calling, mm -hmm. but also it's good also to have skills. Mm -hmm. The field that you are specializing on. For example now, a teacher will go to college so that he may be able to handle the students. Mm -hmm. uh, a doctor or a nurse will go to a college so that he may know how to deal with the patients. Mm -hmm. What about the pastor? Mm -hmm. The pastor needs us to go to college mm -hmm. so that he may know how to define the word. Mm -hmm. Because it is not just by liberation, it is also important mm -hmm. to know what was meant by the writer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What he meant, he said the context, what. Mm -hmm. So if you apply it from the original, mm -hmm. you'll be able now to know why he said that. Why are people uh, mandering the word? It's because they are ignorant. There is ignorance in them. They don't want to go to school. They don't want to go to college because the Holy Spirit will teach them. <laughs> he will teach them that which mm -hmm. is in the Word. Oh, yeah. So you need to go understand it. So I you say it's it, very uh -huh. important for pastors also mm -hmm. to get out and go and understand the Word. Okay. That is why Paul is telling Timothy, stand to show yourself approved. approved. Mm -hmm. A workman who is mm -hmm. not Okay. Dividing the word of truth. Mm. So we need to divide it uh, although Tomeo carry. Although Tomeo <laughs> means a straight. All right. That's a new that's a new word I've learned today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> interesting. So you are for the government regulating the church, but not directly, but having a body. Yes, uh, yes. You know, yes. getting involved with uh, yes. matters of uh, the church. So, yes. So, hey, mm -hmm. In South Africa, because the churches, we are under EAK. Mm -hmm. So we, we can, we can uh, they can regulate through that. Okay. Yes. So there are already measures. We have something that yes. we can work yes. with already. Yes. yes. All right. And there's this thing. Uh, before I, I feel like I'm almost diverting from the topic, but mm -hmm. we'll get into business. Mm -hmm. But there's this matter that has been going out, uh, on people talking about it, Shaka Hola. Mm -hmm. And we see the, uh, statistics every day of people being found. And recently, I think yesterday, some people were uh, being charged because they were begin, being given food and they refused to eat the food completely. And these are people that have been rescued from, from Shakahola. So you would expect these people to, like some others have done, to mm -hmm. accept the food and to at least go back to sanity because mm -hmm. clearly it's insanity and mm -hmm. it's cult and all that. Mm -hmm. But what, uh, what is it that these men do to such people that really changes their mind to that, you know, to that point that mm -hmm. you believe it till death, mm -hmm. you know, and you're ready to sacrifice your life for it and go down no matter what will be done to you, even if you, if the accent is being jailed. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you make of it, Bishop, before we go to Reverend? Uh, let me tell you, Stephanie, mm -hmm. human beings are created with a horror heart. Mm -hmm. They need something to feel that vacuum. Which means everybody is waiting to see the results. So these people who are in Shakaura, mm -hmm. their leader has given them solution to their problem. Sorry to say that. Mm -hmm. But it is a negative solution. Mm -hmm. Because everybody is looking for a solution in life. Yeah. So here he comes and he tells them, now you need to go and see Jesus. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't, I don't. but now it is a long doctrine. Yeah. So it's very important to understand that uh, the emptiness of man is looking something to fill that vacuum. Mm. 
but now it's only that they are going, going They're doing on the, 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 the wrong way. The wrong way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Darren, do you think, uh, Bishop has explained it very well, but do you think that there could be a spiritual force behind it? Because I know there's, you know, that can happen, but to the, to the point that people are rescued and they still want to continue fasting and go and see Christ. Mm -hmm. I believe that's after they've been educated and told that was a lie and everything, mm -hmm. but they still want to go ahead and see Christ through fasting. Do you, could there be a spiritual force behind it? Is there more to it? Or is this just <laughs> talk and the emptiness people have in their hearts? Uh, all I see is, um, of course, beyond every faith there is a, a mm -hmm. spirit. Mm -hmm. Beyond every faith, whatsoever you believe, even you, mm -hmm. there is a spirit behind that. Mm -hmm. That is forcing you. Mm -hmm. uh, that is enabling you to continue pursuing that which you believe. Okay. And uh, it's too unfortunate that whatever they believed is long doctrine, as the bishop put it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, in these spiritual matters, uh, we talk of sacrifices, we talk of uh, 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 demonic, whatever. And um, whatever is happening there, mm -hmm. there are forces. Mm -hmm. behind that because there is no way a super person like you super mind mm -hmm. uh, somebody like me educated uh, and yeah. mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. an honorable guy uh, so <laughs> uh, somebody comes and tells me that uh, you know you have a problem and the way to solve this problem is fa and uh, you fast yeah, until you die make sure a child fasts too <laughs> your child you your that. wife mm. are you doing the same <laughs> eh? The yeah. one who is telling them to do the that. He lies <laughs> that he'll be the last one to do it. It doesn't make sense. You see, that, <laughs> that one is manipulation. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, taking advantage of people because they have a problem. Mm -hmm. And actually, when somebody is in a problem, everyone is looking for a way out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from that problem. Okay. And so if that person is just taking uh, advantage mm -hmm. of, that, of those people. And uh, that's now where manipulation is coming in. And those spiritual forces that we are seeing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, Bishop, back mm -hmm. to you again. Mm -hmm. So how does someone, an ordinary person or a Christian, uh, see the red flags to, you know, the, this pastor, false prophets and pastors that are out there to make a business out of mm -hmm. the congregation yes, manipula yes. by manipulating them as uh, Pastor Mackenzie did. Mm -hmm. So how do you spot that this is actually a false pastor? For someone, I know things of the spirit are designed by the spirit, <laughs> so if it's, it's a mature Christian, probably that will help. Mm -hmm. But someone who's new and, uh, you know, they would just want to, to know God and they're being manipulated by this mm -hmm. false prophet. How mm -hmm. do you tell that this one is out to get my money? Yes, is uh, you know, any kind of doctrine is measured by the word. Mm -hmm. What does the word say concerning this prophecy? Mm -hmm. Or what does the Bible say concerning what this prophet is saying? If it is not according to the word, then it is actually out. Mm -hmm. It is out. So to know whether it is a wrong doctrine, we come to the Bible, we see what the Bible says, then we are able to discern this is a, not a true prophet. Mm -hmm. And that is why now people are now being manipulated because they, they, they have their problem. They take to the man of God, but this man of God is not using the word mm -hmm. because the word is the ultimate. The standard, thing. the yes. word is the foundation. So if yes. it's not by the word, then yes. it's for... And I, I don't see, I don't see where, anyway, in the Bible where <laughs> people are fasting <laughs> up to death. It's not that. No. So that's how you know. <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, actually, okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to end on that, eh? mm -hmm. in the Bible there is no D and there is nowhere that <laughs> Jesus used the same, same method mm -hmm. to heal 10 people with the same, same uh, method. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He healed a lot of blinds. Yes. But some were told that your faith has healed you, mm -hmm. you know. Some were told that go and wash, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, some, but, I mean, different methods, but the same sickness. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. what is happening today in our churches, eh? mm -hmm. if uh, I, I, I give you my phone mm -hmm. and uh, you are healed, mm -hmm. so I want to make it this now. To become that a doctor. would be the doctrine. You see. The doctrine. <laughs> you see. Yes, changing you see. the miracle to a doctrine, <laughs> you know, mm. which is very wrong. Okay. You cannot uh, use a, a miracle mm -hmm. to make it to become a doctrine. Mm. 
Mm. You can't do that. Yeah. You can't say this water will heal you, so you need to everyone yeah, everybody to get water. Get water and everybody get to get handkerchief. Yes. Everybody to get anointing oil. <laughs> everybody no. to get uh, holy water. Everybody uh -huh. to get uh, salt. I mean, yeah. uh, the Samson here, whatever. I mean, uh, there is nothing like that. That's a false doctrine. That mm -hmm. can't is go by definition, that standard. yes. Mm -hmm. That is definition. That is the wrong doctrine. False one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now, uh, let, uh, diverting and now back to, to business, we have a lot of youths who are looking for, you know, and not just youths, but Kenyans are looking for ways to get money. And they think some of the people that are mostly uh, in this doctrine, false doctrine, this cult, mm. were people who were looking, who had suffered enough because they don't have anything. So they just want to go to heaven. They're tired of being in this earth. And I believe the key problem could be finances. Mm. So um, in business, how would you advise uh, someone who's starting off, you know, and trying to get into business and how to maintain a successful business? Let me start with you, Bishop. Yes, uh, what I would say is that uh, no matter how things are hard, mm -hmm. it's very important to have a dream in life. And having a dream, then you need to start small as you progress. Mm -hmm. So the problem that we're having within our country is that uh, we have a lot of people who are, don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. But I want to say you can use small things mm -hmm. to create a job for yourself and mm -hmm. it is going to grow because in any kind of a business we start with a dream then, then after the dream you now progress from that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So just start with a dream. Have, yes. Have, have a dream and mm -hmm. then from there start small. Start small. Small. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then from there you will progress. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, can is there a place uh, of the church in in helping out, especially maybe the youth, Reverend? Mm -hmm. um, can we create, uh, can the church provide resources and support individuals who wish to create small business ventures, perhaps? Oh, yeah, there yes. are those organized churches mm -hmm. uh, who normally do that. Yes. And before they fund whatever the young people want to do, uh, they first take them for a training, mm -hmm. okay, for a seminar. And uh, they advise them, and they will allow you to express yourself mm -hmm. that I have this plan, I have this uh, dream, and that yeah. and we, we we help them to be some organized. Okay. Uh, then uh, we, we can fund them. Mm -hmm. So uh, and they make make mm -hmm. it in this life. Make a living out of it. Yes. Oh, Bishop, yes. you look uh, like uh, you have something. Yes, to say. yes. I I have something in our organization in Africa because of churches. Mm -hmm. We have a circle mm -hmm. whereby people. Uh, and uh, put the money there and then we give them some loans. All right. We call it Inuka Sako. Mm -hmm. I'm the chair ah. for now. So if the young people can uh, deposit their money in their account, mm -hmm. they are able now to get loans. We have given loans to many. They have done a lot. Some have bought cars, some have bought a, a motorbike, some have bought, I mean, many things. Mm. So I think it's uh, very important if they can invest in some circle. As little they can, that they can get. Mm -hmm. They are there to grow and uh, things will be right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Speaking of circles, how, what ways would you advise them, uh, the youth and people in business to, to save up? How good is the circle, you know, compared to just saving in the bank? Because, you know, I can save in the bank and get a loan, but how different is it? Uh, Saving in a circle is, uh, the loans are quick to access. Mm -hmm. Small um, uh, deposits. Mm -hmm. You can deposit 200, 300, 400, and then you get that 100 within no time. Okay. But uh, for the banks, you will take uh, a lot of time. I mean, many days mm -hmm. before you get the loan. So people are just shifting to, to microfinance uh, or also, oh, Bishop, yeah. I think you can tell them that the mm -hmm. interest uh, of Oh Yes, also interest. interest. Mm -hmm. Like now we give at 1%. Uh, but yeah. this is now for the EAPC members mm -hmm. All right. and the pastors. Mm -hmm. So 1% uh, interest. Wow. So comparing to now the banks, oh, 
you can't even compare. You can't, you can't. <laughs> now we are there now to build our young people, mm -hmm. uh, women who need some finances, men who need some money. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to you, Reverend, do you offer advice before uh, giving giving out loans? Because some people get loans, but they get it <laughs> for the wrong reasons, perhaps, uh, mm, you know. They get lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why we're saying that uh, we train them. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, we counsel them. You know, we advise them mm -hmm. that uh, this money will come for it. <laughs> you repay. <Yeah. laughs> One or the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So be, be careful. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are there to see that uh, the, the, the mind that they hand, the interest that they hand, mm -hmm. and they after that. So okay. it's not just to take money and mm -hmm. just, do just use it anyhow. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Speaking of accountability, what, what areas, how accountable, you know, should they be or what measures of accountability should one put in place when they want to start up a business or maintain a business? You know, it home begins with the planners and bishops saying mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that uh, they need to be organized. Mm -hmm. Then uh, after that, mm -hmm. you know, we, we will see this person, mm -hmm. how capable is he through his saving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if he can afford to save mm -hmm. and uh, he continue, so we are there to watch. Mm -hmm. Now we have given this person the loan. Mm -hmm. Is he able to pay? We yeah. are there. And by this, mm -hmm. we are making him to be more accountable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, responsible, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that there is something that he's doing there and there are people who are watching over him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, very mm -hmm. interesting. And Bishop, mm -hmm. um, being that you've uh, been in this for quite a long time, mm -hmm. what advice would you give uh, business owners uh, on how to...